The Canon C70 is the main camera that I use to shoot my weddings and also social media content for my clients. And there's really two ways that I rig up my camera. One is gonna be on a gimbal and then two for a handheld and for tripod use. So let's go over the base of the rig and that's gonna be this half cage system right here. And that's from SmallRink, it's their Canon C70 handheld kit. And the cage itself is really simple to install yourself. It comes disassembled and it only takes about a couple of screws on the top and on the bottom to put it all together. And it comes with this top handle, which is really nice because you have a lot of mounting points on the top. You have a lot of quarter inch, three eighths. You also have the Ari Rosette mount, and you also have a 15 millimeter rod mount on the front as well. And also what's great about this handle is that it is NATO clamp, so you can easily attach it and detach it whenever you need to. The cage itself also has a bunch of those quarter inch and three eighths and also Ari Rosette mounts all over the cage, over the top, and also on the side, you get a NATO clamp right here on the railings, as well as a couple cold shoe mounts on the right and also on the left side here. And it also conveniently comes with a built-in NATO rail on the top so that this top panel can easily slide in or whatever other accessory that you can attach via a NATO rail. Now there are also grooves on the top of the cage right here so that you can actually mount the original C70 top handle. I just don't like that texture, the feel of the top handle, so I opt to go with the included top handle that the small rig cage gives you. Now small rig does make another cage for the C70. It's called the portable kit for the C70, but it only comes with uh, two pieces like this. So one on top and then one on the bottom. And you do get the quarter inch and three eighths mounting points, but it doesn't come with that side piece like this. So it kind of limits the amount of accessories that you're able to attach to the camera. And you can see a huge difference in size comparing the portable kit to the handheld kit. You get a lot more options and a lot more mounting points on the handheld kit, the newer one. So once I have the handheld kit in place, I can now start on the gimbal rig. Now when I'm using my gimbal, I want the rig to be as light as possible. I don't want too much going on for the rig when I'm using it on the gimbal because I get tired super easily, especially when I'm shooting long hours on weddings and also for events, which means that the most bare bones version of my gimbal rig would be just a handheld kit, no top handle. I would have something like this Rode wireless me mic that would attach to the cold shoe mount of the cage and then this would plug directly into the camera and then I would have a lens on the front and that's pretty much it. And this is a very, very common setup that would run when I'm shooting weddings or shooting events or when I need to operate the gimbal for very long periods of time. I even try to keep the batteries as light as possible. So these are the BP30s versus the BP60s, which are much larger uh, and they weigh a little bit more. However, for bigger productions or projects that I'm not gonna be shooting running gun style, I do have have two more accessories that I attach to the camera. And the first one is gonna be the Small Rig Magic Fizz Follow Focus Motor. Whenever I'm on a project where I need to manually focus the lens, the Small Rig Magic Fizz Follow Focus Motor is really ideal because it's small and it's lightweight. In order to mount it onto the camera, this is the 15 millimeter rod attachment that you can attach to your camera just like that. And then this is the included 15 millimeter rod that I'm just gonna slide into right here. And then the follow focus motor goes right on top like that. And then I'm gonna use a gear teeth accessory just like this one and attach it to my lens. And also as a side note, the base plate that I'm using is gonna be the small rig DJI RS3 plate. It's a very long, plate and it's an extended plate that I use. And I like the extended base plate because it gives you more options to move the camera around and adjust the base plate based on how much weight you're holding on the camera so that it's easier to balance on the gimbal. Now, after I've attached the Magic Fizz follow focus motor, the second accessory that I'm gonna attach is a wireless transmission system. The wireless transmitter that I'm using is the Hollyland Mars 300. And on the bottom of it, I have a monitor mount from Small Rig attached to the bottom so I can easily mount it to the side of my camera. And this is what it looks like after I mounted it off to the side. It looks weird because it kind of is weird, but I've found that this is the best way to evenly distribute the weight of the whole rig on the gimbal, and I can have an easier time balancing it on the gimbal. And this setup here is gonna be for projects where I'm not shooting weddings or events where I have to shoot a running gun style because this definitely adds to the weight of the overall rig, which I don't want to add any more weight when I'm shooting a running gun style where I have to hold the gimbal continuously over longer periods of time. Now, when I am using the follow focus motor, that means I would have someone helping me pull focus on this hand grip right here. But if I don't have any help and I have to pull focus myself, I'll actually detach one of the handles on my gimbal and replace it with the hand grip for the follow focus. It's definitely a lot harder to pull focus and operate the gimbal at the same time. So I really try not to use manual focus if I'm shooting by myself. One tip that I have for you guys is to make sure to not have any accessories on top of your camera when you're attaching it to the gimbal because you need to 
make sure that it clears the backside of this roll axis in order to balance it properly and also to make sure that things aren't getting in the way if we're doing a low angle shot. Now, one thing you might ask is why I didn't attach the wireless transmitter to the handles itself or off of the camera and onto the gimbal itself. And the main reason for that is that I don't like having too many wires hanging off of the gimbal itself, hanging off the camera, because I find that it gets caught when I'm moving around the gimbal. If I'm panning around, it sometimes gets caught on like, whatever hooks that it can find itself getting caught onto. And in the past, it's happened quite a few times. So now I just try and keep everything as compact as possible and as close to the camera as possible so I don't run into any of those problems anymore. And the other reason is that because of how compact the DJI RS3 Pro is, if you attach accessories onto like, for example, the top of the side handle right here, it can easily get in the way of the axes as it's turning and it can easily bump into the accessories. For example, the wireless transmission system, if I put it right here, there's a huge chance that this back axis is gonna just bump into the accessory itself. And if you're curious about my gimbal rig itself, I have a whole nother video right here that goes over all the small rig parts that I use for my gimbal. So next we're gonna move on to the handheld slash tripod rig. First things first, I'm gonna detach everything here so we have a clean start. We're going to remount this to the top of here. And that's gonna go on the side like this. So this is what the follow focus motor looks like when it's attached to the top side of the camera. And so now I'm gonna actually attach the top handle first to the uh, NATO rail that the um, follow focus motor comes with. And then for the Mars 300 wireless transmitter, I'm gonna attach it to the top Ari Rosette mount right here. I'm gonna go like that and grab my HDMI cable into the transmitter and then into the camera. And then for the side grip, I'm actually gonna use the hand grip that comes with the Small Rick Magic Fizz follow focus, and I'm gonna break it down even smaller. That's what it looks like. And I have a little accessory that it comes with to attach to natal rails. And so that's gonna go onto the side just like this. Cool. And that gives me like a dual hand grip setup if I'm hand holding it like this. And this grip is really good because it has this little front rocker right here so that if I needed to, I can just operate it from here using the little rocker on the front. Now, something that I should have attached in the first place is gonna be the base plate for the Canon C200, which they don't make anymore. They don't make this part anymore, it's discontinued. So now you have to go with something like the lightweight base plate, and that should give you the same results as this one. So first I'm gonna attach the base of this to the camera. And then this whole thing goes onto this mounting plate right here, which gives you the 15 millimeter rod mounting points. I'm gonna take two six inch carbon fiber 15 millimeter rods and stick it to the back. These are from Small Rig as well. And this will serve as the mounting point for the V-mount battery plate. This one is really cool because it's adjustable. It has a little knob on the back so that the battery can be readjusted after you mount it. I'm gonna make sure I give myself enough clearance so that I can still open up the LCD screen after I mount this accessory on there. Cool. And I'm going to grab my Colbor 99 watt hour V-mount battery and I'm going to mount it to the back just like this. Cool. So now that it's on there, I can just simply push this V-mount battery all the way to the uh, back of the camera so that it makes this rig completely compact. I'm gonna attach my D-tap wire to the camera. And on the side of the V-mount plate right here, I have a little wire clamp so that it kind of holds the wires in place so that it doesn't go everywhere. And it looks just like that after I've mounted it. Next, we're gonna mount this Atomos Ninja 5 monitor to the top of the handle right here. I have a little monitor mount from Small Rig, and we're going to attach it to the far right side of the monitor so that it gives you enough balance for the heavy uh, battery that I'm using on it. Now that I have the monitor on top of the handle, I'm going to attach the HDMI cable from the monitor into the loop out of the HDMI through the uh, transmitter. It's gonna go right here and through the in. So now that we have everything attached, we have picture up here on the monitor and this is gonna be connected to the receiver that's gonna be on a director's monitor so that the wireless transmitter is gonna send the signal out to the receiver so that a director or someone in Video Village can look at the image. So this ring is almost there. The last thing that we need to do is to attach a matte box to the front of the lens to make it look a lot cooler and also to maybe block out light flares or something like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach the step up ring to the front of the lens and then attach the matte box to the front. 
And the one that I'm using here is the Small Rig Mini Mat Box. The Mini Mat Box is probably one of my favorite mat boxes that I'm using. Uh, I just don't really need that much out of a mat box other than cutting out light flares or lens flares. I don't really need it for filtration because I have internal NDs on the Canon C70, so I'm not using it for that. So really it's for cutting out light flares and just looking cool. However, if I do need to use some sort of filtration, the trays on this mat box are stackable, meaning that you can put multiple trays on top of one another. And this is pretty much my handheld rig. This is what I'm gonna be holding and using most of the time. It's a pretty decent size rig, and it also has a lot of weight to it so that it can get smooth handheld shots. And if I needed to use it on sticks and put it on a tripod, I would actually attach this base plate to the bottom of it. And the base plate goes onto the bottom of the rig, just like that. And then I can easily attach it to my small rig free blazer tripod. And one last thing I forgot to attach is the Rode wireless me mics that I use for scratch audio. And that goes onto the cold shoe mount right in front right there. And then I have my 3.5 millimeter jack. And that way I can get better scratch audio in case I needed to sync in post. And so that's pretty much the rig that I run for gimbal and handheld and also on my tripod. If you have any other questions, leave it down in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.